Hey there, Life Editors! Welcome to another one of our weekly live stream calls. Thank you so much for joining me today. All right, before we get started, for those of you who are brand new, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Sage Grayson, and I am a former book editor turned life coach. I help ambitious women edit their habits, routines, and mindsets to balance their happiness at work and home. I'm a life editor, and so are you. All right, I have to say this before we get into today's topic is that uh, my next door neighbors are having a pool party right now <laughs> at nine in the morning on a Tuesday, which is a little weird, but maybe not so weird being that it's summertime in Los Angeles. So if you hear like some music like coming in, <laughs> that's what's going on right now. This is just what happens when you work from home. Leave a comment and let me know, do you have any funny work from home stories or do you have to deal with loud neighbors or what? All right, so as we do, every month we have a different theme, and then every one of our live streams every week uh, goes along with that theme for the month. And the theme for this month, July 2022, is a market like you mean it. Yes, this theme is all about uh, business owners getting out there and putting your products and services in front of the people who could benefit from them. So remember to click the link below and download Ta -da! <laughs> your monthly checklist so you know exactly what we're talking about every week during these live streams. And I will say coming up next week, we've got our kickoff launch party for the live session of Startup in 60. Who is excited? Oh yes, <laughs> I only do this once or twice a year where we have a live session of Startup in 60 where everyone is going through the program at the same time and we're all supporting and helping each other. So click the link below to join us for Startup in 60 and join us next week for our live stream kickoff launch party call. And I'll give you so much more information about Startup in 60. And if you're already on my email list, you're going to be getting lots of information about the live session coming up. So make sure you have downloaded your checklist so you're on my email list and click the link below to get more information about Startup in 60. I'm so excited. We haven't done this in more than a year. It's been a little bit more than a year since we've had our last live session of Startup in 60. So it's going to be great. So today, going along with the theme, Market Like You Mean It, we are doing our book club discussion of this month's book club book, which is the referral of a lifetime. Yes. Leave a comment. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know. Did you read the referral of a lifetime? Uh, did you uh, read it this month and think about how you're going to market your business properly and get yourself out there? So we're going to be going over the referral of a lifetime today. Uh, and if you have not read it, but you do want to read it based on this call, I have the link in the description so you can get your copy. So every month we have a different book that we read together. Uh, and if you have a suggestion for an upcoming book, please let me know. Um, things are going to be changing up a little bit more in the clubhouse next month. Uh, some of you already saw this in the Facebook group. I am changing up the, the clubhouse, but you're actually going to really, really like these changes. These have been some changes that people have been requesting for a while. There's going to be a success path with specific levels and specific things for you to watch or do or complete before you can move to the next level in the clubhouse. And uh, if you do want to be a beta tester, I've always, already put this in the Facebook group, let me know. And in Early August, yes, in just a couple of weeks, I'm going to be requesting beta testers. It should only take an hour or two of your time, depending on how fast you work. So let me know, leave a comment, let me know if you do want to be a beta tester for the new Clubhouse. All right, coming soon. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the referral of a lifetime. And I hesitated a little bit to recommend this book as our book club discussion because it's a book that either you love it or you hate it. <laughs> Leave a comment and let me know. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Because it is silly. I'll put it right out there. This book is silly. <laughs> it is corny. It is highly corny. <laughs> so if you don't mind corniness, if you think silly books are great, you're going to love this book. But if you're very skeptical and you're very like cynical, you might not like the referral of a lifetime. But let me give you some reasons why it's a good idea to be open to silly ideas and silly ways of being. Here's something that you've probably heard before. And I say this to my clients a lot, that it's not stupid if it works. It's not stupid if it works. So some people are like, oh my gosh, that book is so corny. It's so silly. It's so stupid. But the technique, which we'll be going over in a moment, that they talk about in the referral of a lifetime it works. 
and it still works, whatever, 15, 20 years after this has been published, it still works and it will continue to work into the future. So it's not stupid if it works. And I want you to think about that next time you hear an idea from me, your coach or anyone else where they're saying, here's something that you can do that could help you with whatever your goals are. If you think at first glance, like, oh, that's stupid. I don't want to do that. Pause for a moment and really think about like, okay, even though it's stupid or embarrassing or silly, could I still get the results that I want? So I want you to be open to trying new ideas, even if they seem a little silly. All right, <laughs> leave a comment and let me know what's something that you thought was really stupid or really corny at first, but once you actually did it, you realized, oh, this thing has value. All right. Now, the other reason that I want you to be open to silly ideas is that sometimes a story or even a silly story can help illustrate a complex strategy. So sometimes hearing a complex strategy just on its own, it just sounds like gobbledygook. <laughs> it sounds like sitting in those boring lectures in college, like what's going on here? But if they take that same complex strategy and make it into a story to illustrate the point, sometimes it's a lot easier to understand a complex idea. This is known as a parable, and I love reading parable stories. Uh, one of my other favorite parable stories uh, is Juliet's School of Infinite Possibilities by Laura Vanderham. And I love how parables can take something that's complex or dry or businessy and stale and whatever, turn it into a story and help you absorb the information better. So referral of lifetime is a parable. They're taking the idea of business marketing, <laughs> which sounds super lame, and they turn it into a story that takes place in a seaside California coffee shop. <laughs> Are you intrigued? I was when I first heard about this. So let me know, have you ever been able to understand a really complex idea or something that was super dry or boring or whatever when someone gave you an example or told you a story or you had a parable illustrating it? That's what this book does. So I want you to be open to silly ideas, even if they're in story form, because you can get a lot out of a story that you might not get if you just read the dry material. And the, the final reason that I want you to be open to silly ideas is that they show you you are not alone with your fears and struggles. So we follow a character <laughs> through the referral of a lifetime who's struggling with her business. And she's having like lots of the same problems that I bet you out there are having with your business about marketing, about feeling like you're failing, about feeling like you can't like fit into a box of like, who am I, who am I supposed to be as this business owner? So a silly, goofy story can help you realize, wait, I'm not alone. Everyone has these fears and struggles. And then that can give you the motivation to keep going. So those are three reasons I want you to be open to silly ideas. It's not stupid if it works. <laughs> a silly story can help illustrate a complex idea or strategy. And it shows you that you're not alone with your fears and struggles. All right. So <laughs> getting over the idea that the referral of a lifetime is a silly, corny, corny book. Um, there are some really, really good messages in here. So let's back up a little bit and talk about business marketing. I want to know, leave a comment, let me know, how many of you have ever done cold calling? How many of you have heard of cold calling or you know what cold calling, cold emailing, cold messaging, cold marketing is? Yeah, I bet even if you don't know the name, you have heard it or seen it in action. I will tell you right now that cold calling is the grossest, nastiest way that you can market your business. It is super rude and super impersonal and gross. I do not trust anyone who markets their business through cold calling or cold messaging. I remember 20 years ago when I was graduating college and I was in some kind of like business uh, like course teaching you how to write your resumes and how to... Uh, market yourself and how to get out there and how to get a job after college, basically. So I was in a course for that. And they literally had us do during one of the sessions is to do cold calling where we called companies that we thought would be fun to work at and ask them, hey, can I pick your brain about what it's like to work there? And hey, are there any like openings available? Like not even looking at job boards or anything, but just like cold calling a business that they didn't know who we were. We didn't know who the people were, what we were calling. And we were like asking for jobs and asking for work. And we had to do that during this business, like set up your life course. It was 
so gross. And I even recognized 20 years ago that that was gross. That was the worst, nastiest way <laughs> to do marketing. So even though I had a good conversation with the person that I called, it still felt awful. It still felt awful. So here are two reasons why cold calling or cold marketing doesn't work. Number one, it's impersonal. It's called cold marketing because they, the person that you are contacting is cold to you. They do not know you and you do not know them. There's, there, there's no warmth, there's no relationship, there's no bond there. It is completely cold. You are calling a complete stranger. So it's impersonable. How do you think someone's going to react and buy something from you if you're using this impersonal way of marketing? That they don't know you, you don't know them. Why am I gonna spend my money with you? It's gross. And number two, it wastes time. It wastes that person's time when they're doing whatever they're doing, living their life, and you're bothering them with something that they didn't ask for, they did not consent to be marketed to, and it wastes your time. So instead of spending your precious, valuable minutes going after the people who are most likely to buy from you, you're just throwing it out there to hundreds or thousands of people, hoping that someone, anyone will buy from you. You're not worried about ideal clients. You're not worried about whether someone has a budget for you. You're not worried about whether somebody could actually benefit from what you have. You're just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. You want to get sales, any sales, and it's wasting your time. Could you imagine if you spend one, three, five hours a day sending emails to people who are not likely to buy from you because it's impersonal and they don't know you, rather than if you spent one hour, one hour a day, highly focused, sending warm, lovely, um, respectable emails to people who do know you and do want to hear more about your business. So those are two reasons why cold calling and cold marketing doesn't work. Totally impersonal. It wastes everyone's time, your time and their time. There has been a, a huge rise in cold marketing within the past few years. And I know you've noticed this too from MLM companies, multi-level marketing companies, companies. I call them schemes because that's really what they are. The people at the top make a lot of money and the people below make nothing. 98% of people in MLMs do not earn back the money that they put into their business. So they're, they're like losing money every single year. But I know you've seen these because I get them too. On Facebook or Instagram, you'll get a message from somebody saying, hey, hun, haven't talked to you in 20 years, but don't you want to buy my essential oils or my candles or my like fitness shake or whatever the hell it is that they're selling? And it's totally, totally gross. It's like someone who doesn't even know you or they're a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend or someone you haven't talked to in a decade. You're like, who is this stranger that's trying to sell me stuff? It's gross, but they don't care. They're, they're in cold marketing. They're, they're caught up in the, in the cold marketing brainwashing. They're just throwing it out there to hundreds of people every single day and they want a sale. They don't care if that person is an ideal client. They don't care if that person can benefit from whatever it is. They don't care if that person is going through something and doesn't want to be harassed by these nasty cold messages. They don't care. They just want a sale from anyone, anyone at all. It's gross. It is so, so gross. Okay, so leave a comment and let me know. <laughs> Share your worst experience with cold marketing or cold calling, or have you ever been required to do that for a job before? Um, for your own business, I want you to stay as far away as possible from cold marketing and cold calling. So, so gross, so disrespectful. Don't do it. All right. Now, let's talk about something much more pleasant, which is the topic of referral of a lifetime. I want you to spend your precious time focused on the people who are most likely to buy from you. And you may be thinking, Okay, I just started my business today. <laughs> I have no email list, I have no website. Like nobody knows I exist. Nobody knows I have a business. Who's most likely to buy from you? I have no list, I have no social media followers. Who, who's gonna buy from me? Nobody's most likely to buy from me. That's wrong. Even if you are starting your business today, there are people who already know, like, and trust you. Yes, even if you are literally starting your business right now, there are people who know you, 
who like you and who trust you. And those are your most likely buyers. So not someone you haven't talked to in 10 years, not someone who's a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, not someone whose name you pull out of a hat or wherever. There are people who are ready to buy from you today, even if you literally started your business today. So these people are your inner circle. It's your friends. It's your family. It's anyone that you're close to. Um, it's, it's people who already know you and your personality. They certainly know who you are. They love everything about you. And they'll be excited when they hear that you've started a business. They want to support you. Like think about it, your sister or your mom or your, your, your cousins or your friends or people in the neighborhood. They want to know that you have a business and they'll be excited to support you. Those are the people who are most likely to buy from you. And it is like 10 times easier to get sales by focusing on the people who are already warm to you, that you already have a relationship with, than trying to like spam hundreds of people with random emails or, which I've seen some of my clients try to do and I get them out of this right away. They build their, their email subscriber list. So they have a freebie on their website and they're getting email signups every day. And they're like, I have to wait. I have to wait until I have a hundred people on my list, a thousand people on my list before I can sell anything. And that's not true. That's wasting time when you could be earning money by focusing on the people who already know, like, and trust you. Here's the thing. If you have a freebie and we've talked about this before and we go over this a lot in the clubhouse. So if you want to join the clubhouse, click the link below um, and uh, join us. Also join us for Startup in 60 next week. So you have your freebie whatever it is, a checklist, a five minute video, something on your website that gives people a taste of what it's like to work for you. And it's really enticing. So they're like, I'm going to give you my email address. You give me that cool freebie. And that's how you're going to get names on your email subscriber list. But if you wait for those people on your email subscriber list to know, like, and trust you, it's going to take a while. Let's say you have like a thousand dollar coaching program and you want to sell spots for that. If somebody gets on your list today, they are probably not going to fork over $1,000 the same day that they hear about you. It might be months or years later before they trust you enough to do that. But the way that you can get sales now, even in your first week of having a business, is by doing something called warm marketing, or specifically the warm letter technique, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. And if you read the referral of a lifetime, the technique is described in this book in great detail. Uh, the author calls it the uh, 250 by 250 method. Um, I call it warm letters or warm emails. Um, I've heard it called like just referral letters or uh, most likely buyer letters. Leave a comment and let me know what do you call this technique where you reach out with individual emails to people who already know, like, and trust you. I call it warm letters. Uh, and I'm going to give you the technique right now. But before we get into that, this is the pushback that I get from some of my clients when they come to me and they're like, okay, my number one goal is to earn money, earn money so I can take my family on vacation, earn money so I can pay off my house, earn money so I can buy a car, earn money so I feel like I'm contributing to the family, earn money to pay rent, whatever it is, they need to earn money. That's their number one goal. Most of my clients, this is their number one goal is to earn money. And then I introduce them to the warm letter technique and they pull back. They're like, oh, you want me to send emails to my friends and family? And I'm like, yes, that's how you're going to get money when you don't have a website, you don't have an email subscriber list, and no one knows who you are. You go after the people who already know, like, and trust you. And then once they enjoy whatever it is that they bought from you, they'll tell their friends and their friends and their friends, and the referrals will keep expanding. While you're growing your email subscriber list, you can still get money from the people in your inner circle right now. So if that is still scary to you, I want you to think about why you started a business. Why do you have a business in the first place? It's because you have something that can benefit other people. You have a solution to their problems, whatever it is that you do. If you're a graphic designer, you can help people design a logo for their businesses. If you're a coach, you can help people get from point A to point B, whatever kind of coaching you do. If you are a jewelry maker, you can make people feel confident and self-assured with whatever they're wearing. Like whatever your business is, you have a solution to people and you owe it to them and you owe it to the world to put it out there if you give a damn about it. So here's the thing. It, when you have an online business, everyone will eventually know 
that you have an online business. You can't stay in this little vacuum in your little cubby hole and be like, oh, I only want my friends to know that I have a business or, oh, I only want those, those strangers on the, on, online to know I have a business, but I don't want my close family to know I have a business, whatever way you go with that. But here's the thing, being online is public. Everyone will know you have a business eventually. And the sooner you can accept that and realize that I care enough about my business to put it out there, even though everyone will know I have a business, then you're good to go. Here's the thing, your kids will know you have a business. Your partner will know you have a business. Your friends and family will know you have a business. Uh, your bully from high school will know that you have a business. Your manager, if you have a day job, will know that you have a business. All of your coworkers will know that you have a business. The moms on the PTA who you can't stand, they will know that you have a business. Everyone will know that you have a business. So just accept that. Understand that like, if you give a damn about what your business is and who you can help with your solutions, then, then the, everything will be okay. <laughs> if you're just scared about like, oh, I don't want to put myself out there because what if like my mean mother-in-law finds out? She's going to find out. Do you care about <laughs> earning money? Do you care about helping people or not? So that's kind of like my rant right now. If you care, then you got to do the hard work anyway. And if you are too caught up in, I don't want anyone to see me, but I still want to earn money, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You've got to put yourself out there if you want to earn money. And the best way to do that, to get sales when you are literally just starting your business and to get a big boost in confidence is to do warm letters. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it right now. All right. So we go over the warm letter technique in great, great detail in the Startup in 60 program. And I have templates for you to uh, copy and paste and adjust for your specific business in Startup in 60. And remember, our kickoff launch party is next week for Startup in 60. I've got the link in the description if you want to join us. Okay, so the first step of the warm letter technique is I want you to make a list of every single person you have ever met in your entire life. I'm serious every single person you can think of. So your friends, your family, your coworker, your, your managers, your college roommates, the barista at the coffee shop, the mail carrier, everyone in your neighborhood, anyone you met through your kid's school, literally like write down everyone you can possibly think of in your entire life. And then in the referral of a lifetime, uh, Susie, the main character, does that in a couple uh, spurts. So if you need to like write a little bit for an hour, then take a break and do more the next day, that's totally fine. But write a list of everyone you have ever met in your entire life, every single name that you can remember. And here's the thing, we are not categorizing them yet. Just let the ideas flow. So you might think of like your friend's boyfriend or whatever, who you can't stand and write down his name but that's not somebody you're gonna be selling to, but that might spur you, oh, what about so-and-so's boyfriend? Or what about people on the softball team? Or what about people I met at this meetup group or whatever? And it'll just get you thinking of other people. So don't stop yourself or edit yourself as you're writing the names. Just write them down and let them flow. That's step one is to come up with your list of everyone you have ever met in your entire life. Just let the names go. And ideally, your list should have 250 names. <laughs> if you've already done this exercise from the referral of a lifetime, leave a comment and let me know how many names did you get to. So write down 250 names, that's step one. Step two is to A, B, C, D them. And now we're categorizing. Now we're actually thinking objectively about each person. So A people are the people who already know, like, and trust you. They love everything about you. They're your closest friends and family. And when you tell them that you have a business, they're going to be so excited for you. Um, so these are the people who love you already. Those are A people. The B people uh, need a little bit more education to be brought up to A level, but they still know who you are and they don't have anything against you. They're just not as close to you as those A people. C people are really removed from your life. They, you might not have talked to them for a few years or they were friends of friends or you might not exactly remember their name or how you know them or whatever. They need a lot of education about who you are and why they should care about your business before they would ever buy from you. And then there's the D people and D is for delete. 
These are people you would never work with in a million years. You can't stand them. You, you, they make you sick to your stomach. You would never, ever work with these people. Those are delete. <laughs> so you put a big D next to them or cross them out on your list. So step two is to A, B, C, D the names. And they, they do this in the referral of a lifetime too. And uh, I want you to have at least 25 A people on your list. So we're going for about 10%. This is not, this is not like rocket science. This is not like a struggle here. I'm literally only asking for you to find 10% of your list is going to be A people. You're not trying to find 90% of your list. You're not trying to find 200 names. I really want you to focus just on the people who already know, like, and trust you, and they are most likely to buy from you. Or if they wouldn't buy from you, they would 100% recommend you to somebody else who could benefit from whatever it is that you're selling. All right, number three, step three is to send warm letters to those 25-ish A people that you have. And I have the warm letter template in the Startup in 60 program uh, if you wanna join us next week. So when you send a warm letter, what a warm letter is, it's a letter or an email or a direct message or a phone call, or you could meet at a coffee shop. It's however you're communicating with them one-on-one. -on -one. This is not an email that you send out to 25 people CCing them all on the same email. No, no, no. It's warm marketing because you know them, they know you and they love you and they definitely want to hear that you're starting a business. So you send an individual email or an individual message to each person on your A people list. And you first in the, the uh, warm letter, you greet them warmly because you actually care about them and they actually care about you. Can you see how this is very, very different than cold calling? So you might say something like, hey, Sally, how are you doing? I saw pictures of your vacation on Facebook. The kids look so great, like whatever it is. Or you say, hey, Emily, how's your new job going? I'm so happy for you. We should get together for coffee. I had so much fun last month, whatever. You greet them warmly because these are people who you talk to regularly. You are very close to these people. So the first part of your warm letter, you greet them warmly. The next part of your warm letter is you tell them that you have a business and why they should care about your business. Like, hey, I just started a business to help people X, Y, Z, and I'm so excited to help people get results like A, B, and C whatever your business is. So if you're a graphic designer, I'm so excited to start my graphic design business to help small businesses come up with logos and letterhead to look professional. Or I would say that I started my coaching business to help ambitious women edit their habits, routines, and mindsets to balance their happiness at work and home. You guys have heard my tagline a million times. So you say, I do this and I help people get these results. So, so tell them like, I'm, I'm literally starting my business right now and here's what I do. And even if you are literally just starting your business today, explain what you are going to do and the results that those people are going to get. Then the next part of your warm letter, you uh, offer them an, a, either a free call if you only have expensive items and you don't have like a, a digital passive income product yet, or you offer them your easy yes product. So remember uh, last week we had our live stream about an easy yes product. So go ahead and watch that live stream uh, to get information about what an easy yes product is and why you need it. So the thing is, is in your warm letter, you're going to offer them something and you're going to offer them something that is a total no brainer because either it's free, like a free consultation call, or it's an easy yes product. So it is a, it's a low cost, but high value product that of course they get, they're going to want it. So it's, it's like $7 or $9, but it's highly valuable. It's going to help them achieve whatever goal they're working on. And then after you say like something like, hey, I'm just starting my new coaching business and I'm doing 10 free discovery calls to, to practice and, and uh, practice my techniques and help people out and solve their biggest problems, whatever it is. Here's a link where you can schedule a free discovery call with me. I would love to talk with you. Or if I was doing my easy yes product, I might say like, hey, I, I just created a brand new edit my life planner, which is a 150 page daily planner, 70 page uh, weekly planner and five day video course that's going to help you get more done in the next 12 weeks than the next 12 than you did in the past 12 months. Here's the link. It's only seven dollars. Go get it. 
So you, you give them an easy yes, either a free call or your easy yes product, which we talked about last week. Okay, and then you say the final part of the warm letter is you say that you're gonna follow up in two days and really do it, really follow up in two days and remind them that you're going to follow up in two days if you don't hear from them. The reason you do this is because people are busy. <laughs> people have a lot of stuff going on in their lives. They might see your email and think, oh, I'll click on that later. Or they might see your message on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and think like, oh, I'll get to that later. And then they get busy and then they forget. That's why you need to step up as a business owner and contact them again if you don't hear from them. And you follow up once, got that? You follow up once. So if you don't hear from them, two days later, you check in and, and you say something like, hey Sally, just checking to see if you saw this email, I would really like to do a free discovery call with you, let me know how it goes, whatever. Uh, that's it, we do not repeatedly hammer them over the head like, hey, aren't you gonna buy this product? Or hey, aren't you gonna do this thing? No, we follow up once, remember this is, warm marketing, not harassment. <laughs> and and then we, we, we let it go. If we don't hear from them, then we don't hear from them. Some people are just busy or it's not a good place or time in their life and that's okay. Let them go with love. We don't harass people to buy from us. Okay, so let me go over the warm letter technique one more time for you. Again, if you want templates and a lot more help with your warm letters, then click the link below and join us for Startup in 60. We start next week and I definitely wanna see you in the live session. Okay, so first you write your list of everyone you have ever met in your entire life. We're trying to go for at least 250 names. Number two, you A, B, C, D them. And the A people are the people who already know, like, and trust you, and they love everything about you. Those A people, we're trying to go for at least 25 names. Number three, you're gonna send warm letters or warm emails or warm messages to those A people. And uh, you're going to offer that, you're gonna first connect with them warmly, tell them what your business is, uh, what you do and the results that those people get, then you're gonna offer them something that's a no brainer, either your easy yes product or something like a free consultation call. Then you say you're gonna check up in two days and do check up with them in two days if you don't hear from them. Okay, so that is the warm letter technique. Leave a comment and let me know, have you ever sent warm letters and do you follow, like, like my warm letter uh, structure is pretty much the same as the referral of a lifetime. One difference is they have something called um, just let me know. So they say, if you have any questions, just let me know. I don't like that because if you tell people to like, just let me know, they won't. They won't let you know. <laughs> so I, t I take the lead as a business owner and say, I will follow up with you. I will take the lead. I will follow up with you in two days if I don't hear from you. Uh, so that is, that's the thing that I change about uh, the referral of a lifetime's technique versus mine. Okay, so I have done warm letters so many times, so many times with my uh, clients and I have yet <laughs> to do a warm letter where someone actually follows the warm letter technique and they send warm letters, individual messages to at least 25 people who already know, like, and trust them. I've never had a client in whatever the 11, 12 years I've been doing this who has not gotten at least one sale out of it. It is that powerful. That's why this is like a weird thing that I do from a silly book that's super corny, but it works. And, and that's why it's so, so important for you to send warm letters when you are literally at the beginning of your business, when you don't have an email list or you've only got five people on it and you don't have a social media following and you are struggling because you're like, Nobody knows I exist. You feel like you're just like calling out into the void. And, and it can be really, really depressing. I know so many people who give up in their first year of business because they think they have to rely on strangers on the internet to buy their stuff or to get on their email list before they make any money. And that's just not true. There are people in your life right now who are warm to you and you're warm to them and they will buy from you today because they already know, like, and trust you. So go for those people first. Yes, of course, it's your friends and family. Those still count as sales. Those still count as clients, even if it's your friends and family. And then you can get great testimonials and you can put those testimonials on social media, on your sales pages, in your newsletters, and those will help you get more sales. And then your friends and family will tell their friends and family too. So we'll build off of that. 
So please, please don't be scared or nervous about reaching out to your friends and family and asking them to support your business. They'll only support it if it really is a good fit for them. And if they really want to buy your easy yes product or if they really want to do a free call. So don't feel like they're going to like, I don't know, be offended because they're, they're warm to you. They already know, like, and trust you. If you think that sending a warm letter to someone is going to make them lash out and be mean, they are not an A person on your list. <laughs> the A people are going to be excited to hear that you started a business. Okay, leave a comment. Let me know if you have done a warm letter campaign or if you're gonna do one this week, because I am definitely like pushing for all of you to do a warm letter campaign this week. And if you want more help with your warm letters, again, join Startup in 60. We got that kickoff next week and take a look at the referral of a lifetime where they definitely go into the process more. Um, I am really, really interested to hear what you guys thought of the referral of a lifetime. Uh, before we go, I just want to quickly go over, there's another part in the book where they talk about business personalities. And I think a lot of people get caught up is in thinking like, oh, well, well, I'm a coach, so I have to look like all those other coaches or I'm a whatever your field is, I have to look like the famous person in my field. And that's not just not true. You can have your own personality and your own way of doing things for your business that's right for you. So the four personalities that they talk about in the referral of a lifetime are relational, relational, relational business, business relational, and business business. <laughs> so it's really how you relate to people when you are promoting your business. So quickly, a relational, relational person is one who thinks of relationships with others, how to help them, and how to be liked and loved before they think of their, their business. They rarely think of the business ramifications of their actions, or if they do, they immediately justify it in some relational way. So they are fully focused on relationships. And even if they are trying to grow a business, they will spin it in a way, well, this is helping me with relationships. Relational business is when meeting people, relational business person is truly interested in the relationship first. That's why relationship is first. But when the talks turns to business, the person will begin to think strategically. So then they will get into their business mindset. Business relational person doesn't seem at first glance to be interested in relationships, uh, but this person will develop deep relationships after the business is established. So they kind of lead with business. And then once they kind of get you into their business and, and get you like educated about their business, then they'll start forming really strong relational uh, attachments to you. And then business business. This is the trait that is simply the opposite of relational relational. Business, business people normally have a hard time with relational principles and the concepts of the system until they justify in some purely business way the time spent on those they've affected, which they always do. <laughs> so that's where you kind of lead with business and you're still doing it for business reasons. And it's kind of hard for them to grasp like, oh, but you're building relationships too. So for me, I'm a business relational. So I always lead with business. Like, here's how my business can help you. And then after people, after people have been working with me for a while, then it becomes more of like a relational thing. We become a little bit closer. Um, I want to know from you, which one of the four personalities from referral of a lifetime are you? And has it helped you? Like if you read this book, did it help you feel like, oh, I don't have to shove myself into a little box or, oh, I don't have to act like so-and-so. I can be my own type of business owner. So leave a comment below and let me know what type of business personality you have. All right. So this has been our live stream discussion of referral of a lifetime. Tell me honestly in the comments, did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, and if you have any suggestions for other books that we should read next time for our book club, remember to download your checklist so you know everything we're talking about each week. And next week is our kickoff launch party call for Startup in 60. We're doing another live session. We only do these once a year. So please be sure to join us for the uh, live stream kickoff call next week. And if you want to get a jump start and join Startup in 60 right now, there is a link in the description so you can join right now. And like I said before, there's a lot more information about warm letters and there are templates that you can use in Startup in 60, so you can send your own warm letter campaign this week. All right. I don't see any other comments coming in right now. Again, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and leave a comment. I come back and I see all the comments as they're coming in. And uh, I really want to know, what did you think of this book? Are you going to do a warm letter campaign? What's your business personality? And uh, any other advice that you might need from me or any other questions you have uh, about marketing your business? All right. 
That's all I got, Life Editors. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll see you next week. Bye.